day. This is truly the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. As we come together today, I do want to uh, lift up to you a few, uh, just a few announcements. Uh, first of all, remember it's Fellowship Sunday, and following worship, it will also be a time for me to get with those who are wanting to, be, uh, wanting to continue to serve or uh, wish to serve as acolytes, and we will have that training in here. So uh, all of you young ones who have uh, volunteered for that, please uh, just come rally around me, and we will get that started. Um, also, I need uh, to announce that we will need uh, about four people to help carry a bridal mirror. This is like a three, you know, mirror type um, uh, mirror that brides use when they're preparing for uh, the weddings here at our church. And we are taking that from the parlor over to the Ed building. So uh, if we could have four people that could uh, meet back here uh, to uh, help with that, we would be grateful to you and thank you. Also, I wanted to announce on behalf of the uh, United Women in Faith that uh, there have been some folks who went to camp during this uh, summer, and, uh, but we haven't received necessarily uh, applications uh, from all the campers to receive assistance for their payments to camp. Uh, because the UWF, the United Women in Faith, will pay up to half of those campers fees and they will do that even now so if even though you've already been to camp and maybe you've already paid the fees if you apply for it you can still receive um, you know reimbursement for uh, some of your camping fees because they'll pay up to about half of that and uh, you can see uh, Abby um, for the uh, sheets on that the forms and we can get that started for you if you like um, and with that being said uh, I do believe Abby has some announcements. Abby, where are you? There you are. Come on up. Okay, I've got quite a few of um, clipboards here. So I can't see a mic real tiny y'all. Um, the first one is Children's Church sign up. We're going to start that next Sunday. Um, I do appreciate Julian who signed up to start us off, which is great. Um, but if you would like to sign up for that, we would love to have you. It's pretty simple. Um, lesson plans are provided for you. Um, and I'll get those to you ahead of time. Um, the next thing is next Sunday, we are having our ice cream social as well as our pool party. Um, and so we ask if you could sign up if you guys plan to come just to help us try and plan um, how much ice cream to get. Um, with that being said, we also need um, some people to bring like topping, um, let's see, helping with setting up at the park, clean up afterwards, um, people to scoop the ice cream and serve it, um, and then some other things that people can bring. So um, I'm going to send this around too, and if you're willing to help out with that, that would be great. So I'll start it all around. Thank you, Abby. And uh, ushers, if um, you would, please help us make sure that these uh, clipboards get all around the uh, sanctuary so everybody has an opportunity to please sign up. And I thank you for doing that. Can't thank my ushers enough. Um, as we prepare for our worship, let us uh, ask uh, who's celebrating birthdays and anniversaries today. Is anyone celebrating a birthday this week? No hands going up? What about anniversaries? Anyone celebrating anniversary? That I see a hand. All right. Happy birthday to you guys. Your second anniversary. Mandon and uh, Tyson. All right. Any uh, other, um, any other uh, anniversaries? Well, congratulations to you both. I think we need to do some singing, don't you? <laughs> Let's do it. Shaking hands, some people may want to do high fives or fist bumps 
or just may want to say wave, but whatever you feel comfortable with, let's greet one another in the name of Jesus Christ. Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace. Great God, we are in your presence now. Please fill this place with your spirit and presence. Please, Lord, show us it, your word, your message. Fill us with your spirit and lead us forward as the people of Christ. In your precious and holy name we pray this, and all of God's people said, Amen. Now let us sing How Firm a Foundation, hymn number 529. The words will be on the screen, the words are also in the hymnal, but let us sing it.
be seated, friends. At this time, I'm going to ask Josh to come make his way up. And all you young ones, come forward. And why don't you bring your backpacks with you? Yep. So come on up. Bring your backpacks and your stuff with you. We should have enough room. We're drawing quite a crowd nowadays. Seems like, although Pastor Larry told me the one day that I missed, um, he only had one. So I'm starting to get scared that you guys are only coming to see me. Okay. So my question for the day is, how fast have you gone? Not very fast, okay? That's okay. So, um, like maybe in a car. How, how many of you guys have ever been in an airplane? Okay, so you guys have gone kind of fast because those need a little bit to take off. They have to be going pretty fast. But in a car, you can't go too fast, right? Because number one, you'll get a speeding ticket. And number two, it's just not safe. And we can't say that up here. Okay. So um, I've kind of been fast. This last weekend, I got to go really fast. Do you guys want to know how fast? You guys want to know? How? Okay. Um, Abe, so how about that first one? Uh, that means like go. There you go. Okay. So... That's a, that's a NASCAR car, right? And it's driving off. It's taking off. And then go right into the next one. So that's at the Kansas City Speedway, right? Now I know you can't see from here, but I'm in that car. Yeah, here I got a, here's my press photo. There I am. Okay. So I got to go this weekend. It was part of my Father's Day present that they got me a couple months ago. But I got to go ride in. I wish I could say that I got to drive it, but I didn't. I got in with the driver, and we drove around the, around the Kansas City Speedway at 170 miles an hour. That's pretty cool, huh? Okay, so I wanted to share that with you because I wanted to share you something else. Um, so... Whenever I was going, one of the things that you do in a NASCAR is you can't open the door and hop in and put the seatbelt on. Okay? Do you guys know that? They don't have doors. The doors are just like painted on. They're not actual doors. They're solid metal down the sides. So the only way you can get in and out of this car is to climb through the window. Now... How many of you guys have climbed through the window of your family car? Okay, you want to hear something really cool? Like turn around a little bit and look at all of the men in the, in the thing. How many of you guys have climbed through the window of a car? How many of it was after watching an episode of Dukes of Hazard? Okay. So, now when I was, when I was their age... It was no problem for me to hop through a window of a car. That was like the totally coolest thing. Now I'm a little older, and it was a little difficult to get this into the window of a car, especially a NASCAR. It wasn't like they have an SUV out there with one of these big picture windows. No, it was hard for, for me to get this in the car. So I struggled a bit, but hey, I got in there, no problem. Um, but what I wanted to talk to you guys about was whenever I was doing that, there were a couple people there. Now, I didn't hear it, but my wife and Ava were in the crowd, you know, taking pictures. That's how I got the cool pictures. They were in there, and uh, whenever I was trying to hop into this car, I had a couple of uh, spectators who were going, look at that old guy trying to get in the car. <laughs> look at him. And, and to be honest, it concerned Ava because she didn't like somebody talking about her dad, right? And so on the way home, she kind of let me know about it. And that's when I came up with today's lesson, okay? Um, because you guys are going to be starting school soon, right? 
Okay, and when you go to school, even though you might look as cool as you do now, I think you look kind of cool. This is a great group. I, I would totally hang out with you guys at school. Like sit at the lunch table with you guys? Yeah, totally. But there may be kids at school who kind of don't like you for some reason or another. They may look at you. They may point at you. Um, and I told Ava this. Here's why it doesn't matter to me that somebody was pointing at me. It doesn't matter that somebody was kind of laughing at how I was trying to get a leg up into a car window. Okay? I said, because my value doesn't come from those people. My value comes from God. And it comes from me. And so, if I think I'm cool, and God thinks I'm cool, and he does, I mean, he's told me, he told you guys? Yeah, he totally thinks you guys are the bomb. Okay? Um, but if God thinks I'm cool and I think I'm cool, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. And I had the biggest smile on my face because I did three laps around Kansas Motor Speedway. And, um, yeah, and I was just like, well, let them get old and a, a little, eh, and try and hop into a car window. <laughs> you know? Cool? Okay. So, the lesson today, well, let's pray about it, Okay. Dear God, we thank you for this day, and we thank you that our value and our life comes from you and you alone, and so because of that, we don't have to worry about what anybody else thinks of us or what anybody, about anybody else says about us. God, we know that you love us, and we are the perfect, perfect person in your eyes. God, we love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, don't run off right yep okay stay where you're at the show will go on <laughs> thank you josh i see some of y'all brought your backpacks up they look all cool why don't you stand up for a second if you would and uh, just kind of step forward here to the right here why don't you go ahead and do that all right anybody else want to come with their backpack Okay, I was wondering if we get a couple teachers too, but that's okay. Um, go ahead and why don't you turn around and hold those backpacks up for everybody to see. Why don't you go ahead and turn around real quick and show everybody your backpack. There you go. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and bless, do what's called a blessing of the backpack. So we're going to pray over you guys and uh, just over your teachers and over the uh, school year, okay? So let's pray. Lord, we thank you for you are glorious we thank you for all of the awesome wonders that you do especially your love for Jesus Christ Lord we pray that you would bless these backpacks that these children will wear as they prepare to go to another year of school but Lord we pray not so much for just the backpacks but we pray for those who wear them we pray for the students Lord that you would just bless and enrich their year we pray for the teachers that will be teaching them. And we just pray all of this would be to your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray this. Amen. All right. Now, still don't go nowhere. Y'all can take a seat again, okay? <laughs> still don't go nowhere, because a few of you are probably going to be recognized here, okay? Because some of y'all have been serving as acolytes this past year, and we want to show our appreciation to you. So when I call your name, would you please come and let us uh, show our appreciation to you for serving as acolytes. Emma Weichel. There you go, Emma. Thank you so much for what you've done. Let's see. Grant Stapleton. It's Grant here. Yes, there he is. There you go, Grant. Why don't you uh, kind of take a seat nearby here so that way we can uh, show our appreciation proper right after we get this done. Elsie Plager. Plager. Plager, okay. So we got that. Make sure we get that to Elsie. And then Madeline Papa. Hey, Madeline. There you go. That's for you. Ella Moore. Is Ella Moore here? Yeah, there's Ella. Ella's coming up. Okay, there's one for Ella. And Autumn Lang. 
And let's see. And did we miss anyone, Abby? Who just filled in? Kendall, do you fill in a little bit for Acolyte? Well, okay, well, this is going to be for you then. We're going to ask all y'all who Acolyte, including you, ma'am, for filling in for us. Would you please stand up? Would you come up here and join me up here real quick? Okay. All right, just face everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we need to thank these children. Would you please do this now? Thank you all. Thank you very much. You guys can head down, um, and we still have some more stuff to do, so just hang out in that first row right there if you would, please, because I think uh, Abby's got something she needs to do. real quick so everyone can see you. That's, that'll help out a lot better. Everyone's, everyone who got promoted, come on up here. <laughs> okay. And let us now honor you all at this time. Let's do it. <laughs> Congratulations all and God bless. Okay. Feels like a party in this place, I tell you what. <laughs> But it's good to celebrate. And it's also good, always, always a good time to pray to our Lord. So let us take a moment, let us begin our prayers for the people. Um, our prayers today, we begin with, uh, in our prayer concerns, uh, sharing condolences. Uh, for the family of Peggy Hieron Hieronymus, let us remember Peggy, a member of our congregation who passed away. Uh, and her funeral was um, this past week in uh, Nest City. So let us remember her family during this time and uh, commit our sister to the Lord. Uh, also, the family of Ed Garber Sr. Uh, let's continue to remember uh, Ed's family during this time as they mourn his passing. And also, uh, thank you again for remembering uh, my family as we continue to remember uh, my granny. That's what we always called her, Elaine Lawrence. She was always granny to me. Um, Let's continue praying for uh, Diane Henselcheck, who had a uh, medical procedure this past week. 
uh, for Mike Murchison. Let's pray for Mike. For Wade and Natalia Berry. Uh, Wade and Natalia, you won't know them. They're uh, from Texas. Wade was my roommate in seminary. He is an ordained minister in the Southern Baptist Church. Uh, he has been the pastor at the Second Baptist Church of Ranger, Texas, and also a teacher at the, um, at the uh, Carroll Institute uh, down in Texas, which teaches uh, theology to students. Um, Natalia, his wife, is also a good friend of mine, and she has been diagnosed with breast cancer. So I would ask you, please, to continue praying for them in this time. Uh, for Ron Coots, uh, thank you for praying for uh, Ron. He is with us today, as you see. So let us continue to uh, lift up Ron. Uh, Janice Schmidt, um, Meridel Whitmer, Leona Figs, Doris and Dale Snyder, Jean Agee, Dave Lang, Charlotte Scobie, Lewis Taylor, Marge Rice, Elena Stoller, um, Peggy Moore, Helen Meter's family of Mike, Rick, and Brian, Charlotte Orton, Keith Barrett, Norman Ashcraft, and John Lukert. Let us continue to remember the, um, these folks in pr our prayers to the Lord. Let us also continue to, pl uh, to pray for peace in the Ukraine and Russia, for an end to the violence, and help for the refugees and the reuniting of families. Let us pray for assistance for food, water, shelter, compassion, and care. Let us pray for those who struggle with uncertainty, unrest, and stress in these challenging days, reminding us that God is still sovereign and in control. Let us pray for God's priests. Let us pray for those with COVID and long-term effects from COVID. And also, one thing we've been talking about a lot, at least in my discussions with people, I think we need to begin praying for rain. Let us lift up our pleas to the Lord and ask for the Lord to shower us with blessings of rain. Are there any other joys or concerns that we need to lift up today? I think we need to pray for our students and our teachers. We've already done that a little bit before, but let's continue doing that. Any others? then let us go before God in prayer and let us lift up our prayers to the Lord. Let us pray in silence. Lord God, to you we've commended these prayers of the people. And Lord, we, as we lift up those and we remember the concerns that we have for them, and also, Lord, the situations we face in this world, we place them, Lord, in full trust in you. For we know that you never abandon us, you do not forsake us. And so we can trust you with everything that we need. So, Lord, we lift these prayers to you, those that we've said aloud, that we've read off from lists, and, Lord, those that we have mentioned in the silence of our hearts. We pray that you would make us the congregation you call us to be. And, Lord, we also pray that you would guide us all, together and separately, individually, to live for you just as Jesus the Christ taught us to pray. And so now we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven... Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thine will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen indeed. At this time, let us now prepare to sing hymn number 511, Am I a Soldier of the Cross? Again, words will be on the screen as well as in the hymnal. Scripture reading today comes to us from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 12, verses 49 through 56. If you have your Bibles with you today, uh, be it on book form or on your phone, I invite you to take those out, open them up, and read along as you hear the Word of God proclaimed this morning. Let us pray. O oh, gracious Lord, be present with us. And by your Spirit, may your word flow forth into our souls. And may your messages to us be made known to the glory of your name. Amen. I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five and one household will be divided. Three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, It is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, There will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites! 
You know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And I apologize, I should have had you all stand for the reading of God's word, and I did not. But I am going to ask you to please stand for the glory of Patrie as you are able. Let us sing that now. and interpret the Holy, Spirit, the Holy Scriptures exactly as they do, that you're going to hell. It brings to mind, when I was attending college at University of North Texas, we had a uh, student commons area. And um, anyone could come there and post stuff. They had a place for you to post your flyers and everything. And people could stand there and make speeches if they so desired to. It was a free speech area. And this one guy was standing on a concrete pillar as I was passing by on my way to some class, I forget which one, and uh, you could hear his message. It was pretty blunt. You're going to hell, and you're going to hell. And as I was going by, I kind of muttered, God's sake, sit down. <laughs> yeah. And then there are those who proclaim that the Holy Scriptures are simply works of art, very nice works of art, beautiful works of, I of art great stories, but no divine authorship whatsoever. And there are some who say that the scriptures are even wrong or outdated. They say that Christians who cling to the Bible as the word of God are misguided and that not all scripture is authoritative. Um, as Life Church, um, which is one of our many Mega churches that have uh, online sermons and so forth brought up a good point. There are some people who honestly say it really doesn't matter what you believe as long as you are sincere. Don't you just want to slap those people? <laughs> and then there are those that say that Christian faith is at best a delusion. And the people known as Christians are deluded. At worst, people have come to believe that both faith and its adherents, excuse me, the Christian faith and its adherents are evil, deserving nothing but death and damnation. Who is right? Who is wrong? What should one believe? What do you do? How do you live? And is the only thing that we can expect in this world from the Christian faith, or in any way about the Christian faith, is division? Is that it? Is that all we got to look forward to? You know what, I personally think it has always been this way. I think honestly it has. I think we probably notice it more today thanks to social media. But throughout history, people have committed unspeakable atrocities in the name of religion or even against religion, period. And it's still happening today. 
as it was happening in Jesus' day. The truth is, is that while Jesus came to save the world, the world was and is at odds with Jesus. Folks, do you realize that if the world was not at odds with Jesus, Jesus wouldn't have had to have come. I seem to recall something about a garden and a serpent and a fruit and humanity. And from that point forward, the world was at odds with God. And you know what? Likewise now, Christians have been and are now at odds with the world. All because of our faith in Jesus. Jesus says in his first verse of our reading today, that I came to bring fire to the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. Fire in this case seems to mean judgment. This can cause us to think that Jesus was calling for a fire that will destroy. Is Jesus desiring the condemnation of his enemies and all who would follow? Is he calling for destruction? I have no doubt that Jesus desires the destruction of sin and death and the defeat of the evil one. After all, God cannot and will not abide with evil. Nevertheless, I cannot say that Jesus desires the destruction of souls. Remember what we learned only a couple of weeks ago. Jesus desires that all, all the world would turn to Him, that would come to Him in repentance. That's what He desires, that all the world be saved through Him. It might be helpful to realize something about fire. We tend to think of fire as a destructive force, but fire is not always simply a destructive force. It's not. There's a scripture passage from the Old Testament. Malachi chapter 3, verse 3. In that verse, the messenger of the covenant, whom the Lord is sending, will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present their offerings to the Lord in righteousness. So fire could be used to purify. There's a story by an unknown author called The Refiner's Touch. In it, a woman reads the passage from Malachi, and in seeking to understand its meaning, she visits a silversmith, okay? And she asks the silversmith if it was true that he had to sit there and watch the fire, and particularly he had to watch the silver in the fire, if he had to always keep an eye on it. And he said, oh yes, if you leave it in too long, it'll burn up. But you have to burn out all the impurities. So she asks him, how do you know when you are done? And he said, when I can see my reflection in it. Just like the Lord would wish to see God's reflection in us. That would be purification. Fire can also be used to bring forth new life. Has anyone here ever been to Yellowstone National Park? It's beautiful. I remember going there and just being awestruck by the beauty and wonder of nature. But I also remember one day we went to a portion of the Yellowstone National Park and it was a part that had been struck by a forest fire, a massive forest fire just burned out all these pine trees. So you're looking at the dead hulks of these burned out pine trees. And our ranger said, you know, everyone thinks fire Forest fires are terrible and just sad. And you know, there is a sadness to it, to see these beautiful trees go up in smoke. But let me remind you of something. Fire is something natural. In this case, the forest fire was started by a lightning strike. And then he held up a pine cone, and he said, this is a pine cone. All of the seeds that are used to bring forth new pine trees are sealed up by a sap in the pine cone. And the only way the pine cone will release those seeds is through intense heat. And then he said, look at the base of all those burned out pine trees. And so we did. And there's all these young little trees starting to grow all through 
that burned out forest. What the fire took away, the fire also brought forth anew. Fire can be used to create. You ever seen a blacksmith work or someone who makes glass? They can, put, they can produce such wonderful designs. They can be breathtaking. Likewise, the Holy Spirit works in us like a transforming fire that transforms us into the people God calls us to be. In all these examples, in all these cases, I think one thing comes very clear. God takes what is not desired, that is our sin, and the evil of this world, and casts it away as far as the east is from the west, which comes from Psalm 103, verse 12. So as you can see, Christ does come to divide, First of all, he separates us from our sin. That's the first division. But Jesus also says in verse 50, I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. And I believe the baptism that Jesus speaks of in this case is when he takes, this, when he takes his place on the cross at Calvary. At the cross, Jesus would kindle this fire that would change everything. God saw the creation that God had declared was good, now languishing in sin and despair and destruction. This troubled Jesus, but more so Jesus had to take the sin upon himself. No wonder he was in distress. Imagine him having to take the entire sin of humanity. That is, everyone who had lived before, everyone who was living in his present day, and every one of us in the future, including everyone sitting in this room. No wonder he was in distress. And it would not end until he completed his work on the cross. Now this does not mean that after Jesus' redeeming work, everything was all better and peaceful. Oh no. Jesus is very clear on that when he said, do you think I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five and one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. This fire from God is to separate us from the ways of the world. And this immediately puts us at odds, puts us into conflict with the ways of the world and with folks who have not yet embraced the faith. That's the one thing that faith does. As E. Earl Ellis wrote, the call for decision is a call for division. So the Christian faith causes those who are against Jesus to be against those who believe. That is a simple truth. Because the world does not love Jesus. And so you are going to have that division. There's just no way around that. Strangers, friends, even family members will oppose you because of your faith in the Lord Jesus. It can be painful. And I do not joke about that because I have experienced it myself. I have had people whom I've loved and still do, walk away from me and not speak to me again because I spoke or acted on behalf of my faith. And there are people who have suffered far worse than I have. Some have even suffered death for their faith. Others have just been cut off from their families and their communities. In those painful moments though, or at least in my painful moment, I found a blessing. And I believe everyone who has been through that fire has found a blessing. The Spirit of the living God, who is present in the hearts of the faithful, will find comfort and peace. Because you will find that you are not alone. God is there, and, is, oh, and so is your forever family in God. It will never be taken from you. What is more, you must still continue to love those 
who have been opposed to you. Everyone, your family, your friends, even the stranger. For Jesus came for the entire world. While the division is real and Jesus came to bring it, it was to separate the people in this world from the sin of this world. It was not to cause terror amongst people. It was meant to separate people from the world's sin. Remember, Jesus desires that all would repent and come to him. All the world. One of the greatest assurances I believe we have is that all who believe in Christ shall not die but have everlasting life. Therefore, when we enter into the glory hereafter, we may find ourselves face to face with those from whom we've been separated. And at that moment, when we see one another in the glory of God, is anything that we fought over before going to be worth a hill of beans? Is it going to matter anymore? I don't believe it will. I don't believe it will. So love and pray for all whom you know. This is what it means to stand in the fire. Jesus also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? All that to say is, we cannot say that we are unaware. I mean, we would have to, we're in denial at that point. We are in denial if we say that. We fool ourselves. Just look around you. You see the evil that exists in this world. Remember the truth that Jesus shared with us, though. You realize you cannot say that you are a Christian and continue to live in a lifestyle that the world applauds but is against the Lord. You cannot do that. It doesn't work like that. As Tyndall would point out, they were hypocrites because they concentrated on what was superficial and not what was important. There is a temptation to go with what the world says and to be a part of the crowd and have a good relationship with everybody. It won't cost much, just, you know, some of your beliefs, your faith. Eh, you can cheat a little bit on that. There's a temptation to just be happy with our own lives, to be comfortable. Let us not forget, though, that as Christians, we do have a God with us through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. Let us not forget that the Spirit makes us one with Christ, through whom we may approach the Father. Let us not forget that the Spirit makes us one with each other, and so we are not alone. Let us not forget that the Spirit makes us one in ministry to the entire world. And so we are equipped to live in faith. We are equipped to live in faith. The Lord will lead you. Trust in the Lord. Pray to Him. Read the Scriptures. And just as Jesus shared with us, let us now share with those around us. We are separated from the world by our faith but we do not shun people in the world. If we start doing that, then we're no better than the world. Rather, we are to be as God told Abraham, in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. That's Genesis 12, verse 3. Let us be the people of God, ready to stand in the fire for the glory of God. Let us stand for what the Lord has taught us, and let us share God's love truth with everyone. To that end, I wish to open this invitation. If there's anyone here who wishes to join with this part of the body of Christ here at First United Methodist Church, or if you're someone who seeks baptism for yourself or maybe for your children, if there is someone here who wishes to give themselves to Christ for the very first time, then come. Let's talk. If there's someone here who's carrying a burden on themselves, be it maybe a sickness, be it maybe a division of some kind from a loved one or someone who's truly valued, 
or something else, please, let's talk and let's pray together. And also this, if you know someone who is new in the community and may not have a family of faith to rely on, please let us know this as well so that we might share our love with them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen and amen. At this time, I'd like to invite the ushers to please come forward for this morning's offering. Brothers, please collect the gifts from the people. Please rise. of time sent your son Jesus Christ to redeem us when we went astray and by the power of your Holy Spirit you continue you continue to give us everything that we need Lord every good gift we have is a gift from you and we can never pay it back today we've only returned a portion of that goodness to you but we pray that you would bless these gifts and that you would further your kingdom with them and that you would also take each of us as a holy living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. In his precious name we pray this and give thanks to you. Amen. Thank you. Now let us sing our last hymn, O Day of God, Draw Nigh, hymn number 730.
that uh, today is Fellowship Sunday. I seem to recall seeing a table with refreshments, I believe, uh, over here on this side of the sanctuary. Um, well, kind of outside the sanctuary, but uh, well, you, you'll, you'll see it when you go over there. Um, and so I would invite uh, young ones to uh, please uh, go get your, um, you know, those who are going to be acolytes to please go get their refreshment, and then they can meet me over uh, by the pastor's study, which is just right over here, Okay. Also, one other thing I forgot to mention, we uh, pulled some furniture out of the uh, parlor. It's now been looking really nice now. We've had people do a wonderful job of painting and preparing the room. And so if you would like to take some pictures home that we're not using anymore, or a clock, or a pillow, or some mirrors, we have them available by the quilt that is in the back of our sanctuary. So please take a look at those items, if you would, and feel free to take them. And now receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. He is Lord.